Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode, uh, where are we, something of the Spears Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears. Uh, I'm in a very good mood, man. Before I get to uh, the podcast, I have a few dates I want to plug. Sydney, special secret show, Sydney, January 30. There are only 100 tickets to this thing. January 30, I am doing a premiere screening. I'm going to be there in a movie cinema for my secret upcoming program. Project. Now, you guys may have noticed, last year, I was in America for an entire month. Well, you are about to find out. Fucking cunt! Ah, oh, fucking piece of shit camera just died on me. Of course, right? I don't charge my camera before I start the fucking podcast. I was in, I was in such a good mood, and then this shit happens, bro. Ah, oh, now I gotta adjust this. Dude, I'm... That is so... Oh, great, now the fucking big one's gonna die. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, for fuck's sake. I swear to God, all I do with my life is charge shit and then plug it back in. That's all I do. All I do every day is just like wait for batteries to die and then charge them again, plug them in, right? All I'm trying to do is fucking sell tickets to this very special project I have coming on and then everything just fucking dies. (sighs) All right, so I'm trying to I'm trying to regain my composure. Sorry, very angry start to the episode, but hey, that's Beard Sundays, isn't it? I'm trying to regain my fucking composure. So I have a very special event in Sydney. It is on January 30. Tickets are on sale right now. LouSpears.com slash gigs. At the top of the page, you will see a red bar to get to the premiere screening. This is a very special project of mine. Uh, it's not a comedy special. It is... Uh, ah, fuck it. It's a TV pilot, right? So your boy's been working on some TV. And uh, hopefully, right, uh, we can get this thing picked up. But we have episode one locked away, completely independently made. Uh, with uh, with me, myself and my team, and it is fucking great. I'm not going to reveal the name of it. I'm not going to reveal too much. You will see when you see, but let me tell you, it is great. I'm going to be there. I'll be performing before it uh, starts, and I'll also have a Q&A afterwards, and of course, I meet everybody there. So Sydney, there's 100 seats left. I uh, Tickets started selling to it before I had even announced it. Like I, I, like, I didn't even know it was put on sale. Like, my management just puts it on sale, and then I get like like fucking 10 tweets of cunts going, oh, I've got tickets. And I was like, tickets to what? What am I doing in Sydney? And then I was like, oh yeah, that secret thing. Fuck. So I should post about that if people are buying tickets already. So grab them. Um, you guys are the, kind of the first people to find out about it if you listen to this on Sunday. So go get that shit. Um, they're on sale now. And also, my regional tour is on sale now. I'm going to get into the podcast in a minute. I just have to get through these fucking dates. I am going to, with Luke Kidgel, Warnable, Ballarat, Shepparton, Wagga Wagga, Bathurst, Central Coast, Port Macquarie, Toowoomba, Bundaberg, Rockhampton, Mackay, Townsville, and Cairns. Tickets on sale now. LouSpears.com slash gigs for the regional tour and the special Sydney premiere screening. Um, that'll probably be the only show I do in Sydney this year, so come see me. Right, now, let's get into it. So, obviously, we've all seen Jeffrey Epstein. This, man, I've been, uh, you guys know, if you watch this, if you listen to me, if you like my shit, I've been fucking obsessed with this shit, and it's gotten to the point where none of my friends care. I try to talk to my girlfriend about it, she goes, I don't care anymore, it's horrible and it makes me sad, stop telling me about it. I talk to Luke about it, and he goes, yeah, he's probably killed, we can't do anything about it though, I don't care. I'm like, fuck, that's the two people that I talk to regularly, gone, that's my, that's my whole social circle, doesn't give a fuck about Epstein, but I do, so you have to fucking put up with it. Dude, they released photo, photo Photos of his body. That cunt was fucking absolutely murdered. I've never seen a more murdered corpse in my life. I had to. I normally I hate looking at these things. I don't like gore. I don't know how fucking people sit down and watch that shit, like live streams of horrible shit and like that, all that live leak stuff of just people dying. Some people are just obsessed with it, and they they need to be put on a fucking list. If you're the type of person who likes like. I don't think I know anyone who likes watching it, but I know a, I know a few people that, that, like, have to watch it. Do you know what I mean? Like, they don't like it, and they feel bad after they watch it, but if they see a link of, like, guy gets electrocuted, they're like, gotta watch that. No, sir. I can't do... I can barely do, uh, like, seeing someone get knocked unconscious. That's kind of my limit. I can see someone get knocked unconscious. I can watch the UFC. That's my limit. 
Any anything more fucked than you than the UFC, dude. If I see a limb go away that it shouldn't, I I can't. I have to throw my phone in the bin. I can't watch that shit. I fucking hate watching it. You know that that whenever I see like a viral clip of somebody on the leg press, I'm like I can't watch it because one time, right? One time, it was just some guy doing leg press, and then all of a sudden his fucking legs went inwards, and I was like, no, ah, no, and I can't do leg press anymore. Can't do it. And I'm not doing it heavy, but fuck me. I'm not doing that exercise anymore. I can't watch that shit. So now I can't even, like, if it's a prank, if it's, if it's this, if it's an impressive lift, I can't watch it because in the back of my mind, I'm just, I've got PTSD, right? I've, uh, I've got uh, post-traumatic leg press syndrome of that one time where I thought I was going to watch an impressive lift and instead I watched someone's, someone's knees get folded like cards. Not good. So uh, I don't watch that shit. I can't do gore. I, man, I had fucking, I had a friend who watched the whole Christchurch thing. Dude. Sociopath. I, I, you know what? I, I don't know if he's my friend anymore. He watched the whole thing. He didn't like it, and he didn't know why he watched it, and he immediately regretted it, but he also had to watch it. I was like, why the fuck would you want to watch that? He goes, yeah, it was horrible. I, I hated it, and I can't stop thinking about it. I was like, yeah, no shit, bro. I don't want to watch that shit. That's terrifying. Anyway, but you know what I can watch? pedophile human traffickers getting killed. I can watch that. But I do think it's a fucking awful thing that he was murdered because now we're never going to catch anyone, right? So, uh, they finally released photos of Jeffrey Epstein's body, right? And uh, that... He was so murdered, right? So they've released photos of his body and photos of his cell. Now, separately, right? They didn't release photos of his body in the cell because they found the body and they moved it before investigators could come, which is against protocol and you should never do. So they didn't get proper crime scene photos. They didn't get to see how was his body placed when he died, when he killed himself. Is this a way that a, that a man would lie after he had hung himself? No. What do you think they did? They, they fucking untied his noose that he made himself in his suicide-proof cell and then moved him out and then were like, oh, we should probably take photos. Oh, we'll do it now. No way. Someone killed that cunt. He's got this giant red ring around his neck, which you would get if you did kill yourself, to be fair. But he has it, right? If you hung yourself, right? Logic just dictates your ring, your bruises, would be kind of like diagonal, upper, right? They'd be, you know, up to the chin, surely, because your chin is where it stops. If you didn't have a chin, you would just fall out of the fucking noose. So it should go, like, from the top of your neck, right? Up. This shit is at the bottom and it's straight to the back. Like someone getting behind you and then putting you on the ground and pulling directly. It, there's no angle on it. It's super deep. It looks fucking violent. Horrible, right? So there's that. And then they also release photos of his cell. Epstein, really tall guy. Not really tall, but he's like 6'1 to 6'3 from what I've read. Now, if you look at the cell, there is like nothing that's high that you could hang yourself. I was looking at his cell. I was like, how would I hang myself? The only thing I could think of was he had something on the windows, but it looked like it wouldn't support his weight. And also you can't, you can't really kneel and hang yourself because your body would just automatically stand up. It's like how you can't like drown yourself in a bath unless you're, like, dead sober. Like, you, you just can't do it. Your body just fucking wakes up involuntarily. Your body is just like, we don't want to die, and then comes up. It'd be like, you know, you couldn't hang yourself squatting because your body would just stand up. At least I don't think, right? Again, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't fucking the most... This isn't the New York Times cunts before you write your fucking... Actually, um, this is Speared Sundays, right? I'm a comedian. I read one article. I looked at five photos. And now I'm talking as if I know the whole story and I know who killed him, right? If you stay tuned to the end of the... After you watch all the mid-rolls, I'm going to tell you who did it. No, right? Talking out my ass. Now... You know, on one, one podcast, I broke down the whole Jeffrey Epstein thing and the entire time I was saying FBI instead of CIA. <laughs> Just wrong. And like so confident. What, like, dude, but also, who the fuck listens to a comedian and goes, oh, he knows what he's talking about? Right? Anyway, 
So, in my uneducated and very biased opinion, there's no way he could have hung himself from a height in that cell. So I was thinking the only way he could do it would be if he he had a bed, right, and he tied the noose to the bed and then he'd lay down face first on the floor and then leant forward. But then I was like, I don't think you would have enough weight because that would be just your head, right? It wouldn't be the rest of your body. You need the rest of the body to be heavy enough. So I don't know. I don't know how you would do it in that cell. But the, the, the worst thing for me is that they took the body out of the cell before they got evidence. And then the photo of just the marks around his neck going straight back. It just looks so much like someone just pulling anyway. Right? So also, uh, the, his family or his estate who have hired uh, someone to do their own autopsy. The guy who did the autopsy has looked at the bones and has, and he, he also went through, like, I think it was in the article that I read, he went through uh, the last 30 years, hundreds and hundreds of jail suicides by hanging, and he didn't find the... He, the, he only found the injuries that Jeffrey had in two cases. Out of all of the hundreds in the last 30 years, the injuries that Jeffrey had only happened in two other cases of suicides. And then the guy who's done the, the autopsy, not for the government, has gone, yeah, this shit was a suicide. It's got me thinking, you know what I think? I don't think the government did it. He was definitely murdered. I don't think someone in government did it. I think... That if the government did it, it would have been done better. I reckon it just it's just too sloppy. I reckon it was someone with fucking heaps of money and they paid off everyone and no one could really coordinate with each other. So every person fucked up their job a little bit, right? He paid off the guards. Uh, they didn't really cover their stories properly. They didn't delete the footage in the best way. He paid off a murderer. He didn't look at, make it look like a fucking murder properly. And he paid off the guy who did the autopsy and he came up with a shit lie. I don't think it was someone, or if it was someone in government, he would have done it outside of the facilities. I just feel like it would have been done better. You know, like something like, you know, JFK, nice and, you know, eat. they did that well. <laughs> if they did it, they did it well. I'm not saying they did do it, but if they did it, it was done well because I could believe anything, right? You could research and believe it was a conspiracy. You could research and believe it was real. There is no way a normal person reading all of the facts about the Epstein thing would go, oh, obviously he killed himself. So I think it was someone operating outside. You know, they didn't hit their KPIs, yeah? Like, if this was a call center, you know, like my, like their call, their call time would be too high. Like, you need to get that call, t- call time down about 60 seconds per call so you can, so you can answer more calls and be, um, be more efficient. They didn't do it efficiently. They weren't hitting those, those key performance indicators, you know? They fucked up. I was researching more into it. So the, uh, they're finally asking the question about, hey, what happened to the footage? Because my thing was, okay... Let's say, right, on the off chance the camera's in, outside, and near the cell, all died. Fine. Okay, I believe you. I want to see the entrance, the exit, and all of the other cameras in the prison. Who came in, who came out? That's what I want to see, right? Show us that. That hasn't been shown, yeah? Now, the, foot- the, the question about the deleted footage. I, I actually want to read this article, yeah, because I want to get this right. Um, what did they say? So, Jeffrey Epstein's suicide attempt video accidentally deleted. So, if I'm correct, I might be wrong on this, but uh, I thought they were saying that the cameras were off. Wasn't that what they were saying? Right. Let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure they were saying that the cameras were off. So, here's what their excuse is. Um, Surveillance footage taken outside Jeffrey Epstein's jail cell on the day of his first apparent... Oh, so this isn't fucking even from his second one. His successful one. Oh, dude, I didn't read that bit. Oh, well, this is even more sus. So they already fucking deleted the footage from the first time he 
tried to kill himself. And the second time. Twice in a row. Dude. Surveillance footage taken outside Jeffrey Epstein's jail cell on the day of his first apparent suicide attempt has been permanently deleted, prosecutors say. That's fucking crazy. Oh, well, that's just sealed the deal for me. He was absolutely murdered. I didn't even think of that. Like, oh, what about the first time he tried to do it? Can we see the footage? That's crazy. So he survived one attempt then. That's crazy. But he was later taken off suicide watch, leading to a second apparent attempt, (laughs) the news has to say apparent, in which he died, sparking a conspiracy theory that he was murdered. I think that, that at this point, it's like, it's a theory in the sense of the theory of relativity. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's about as close as we can get to a fucking fact as possible. Like, when you throw something up, it comes down. That's the theory. The theory of gravity. The theory of relativity. That's what we're fucking getting to. It's like that real. Like, yeah, we're calling it a theory because we have to, because nothing's a fact, because you can't ever prove something. But... Every time we've tested it, it's come back with the same result. So I'm pretty sure it's like the theory of relativity or evolution. Pretty fucking real, bro. Um, Among these curiosities is now the deletion of the tape showing the coming and goings on the night. This is what I wanted. Now the deletion of the tape showing the comings and goings on the night of Epstein's July suicide attempt because MCC officials mistakenly recorded footage on a different floor of the facility. When the fuck would that ever happen? This is the jail's statement. The MCC, quote, inadvertently preserved video from the wrong tier, and as a result, video from outside the defendant's cell on July 22 to 23 no longer exists. So for only two days, they were recording the wrong level. And that's, that is not how fucking security cameras work. They record. You would have to change that. That's crazy. And this is what the FBI said. The missing footage was discovered by the FBI last week as the agency reviewed copies of video provided by the jail. Oh, so they, this is what the jail gave them. They're like, we're going to need to see the security footage. And the jail was like, all right. And then they just overwrote it and deleted it and then sent it in. Dude, that's the shit that I would do when I didn't do my homework. I would do that shit. I literally did that. When I was 15, I didn't do my fucking English homework. So what I did was I handed it in on a USB and I didn't do the work. So to get away with not doing the work, I decided to put on a file of something else on the USB. I put my math homework on my USB and I gave it to my English teacher going, here's my assignment. And then I pretended that it was a mistake when in reality, I never did my English homework. That is literally what I did when I was 15. They were like, oh, we killed him, but to get away with it, we will give them the footage from level three instead of level two. That'll, that'll hold him off for a couple of weeks while we scramble to replace it with something fake. That is literally what I did when I was 15. That's fucking nuts. After reviewing the video, it appeared to the government that the footage contained on the preserved video was the was for the correct date and time but captured a different level than the one where uh epstein was located because the preserved video did not show officers responding to any cells seen on the video that's fucking crazy and this this is the guy who did the second autopsy i think the evidence points towards homicide rather than suicide noting that some bones in Epstein's neck were broken in a way that would would suggest pressures inconsistent with a hanging. And, right, this is the two guards who, who, uh, who didn't see anything. These guys were paid off for sure. The two guards on duty that evening have since been accused of online shopping and falling asleep at the time of Epstein's death and have since then been charged with falsifying records and conspiring to defraud the United States for their alleged cover-up after the fact. 
See, that's why I think, I don't think it's the government because the government seems to be, at least be it looking into it on a surface level. You know, like they're at least making a show of investigating. That's why I don't think it was there. I think it was just like a bunch of crazy rich people who were all on that fucking island going, all right, let's all chip in 10 mil, bit of pocket money, we'll get it sorted. It's crazy. Is there anything else interested? Interesting? No, nah, not really. Yeah. That's nuts. I yeah, I don't know. That, that's fucking that's fucking crazy that that shit's happening and it's it's fucking crazy that I'm still talking about it, isn't it? Huh? Isn't that fucking mental that I still give a fuck? Anyway, I saw the new Star Wars film. Spoiler alert. Dude, if you don't see a film by the time I see a film, you don't deserve to fucking, uh, you know, not get it spoiled for you, all right? I'm going to talk about the ending of the new Star Wars film. Here's my theory before I get to the spoilers. I think that whole film, right, is a great argument for gun rights. The last Star Wars film is a pro-gun film, and I'm going to tell you why, all right? Dude. Everyone in Star Wars has a blaster and everyone in Star Wars has guns on their ship. And the only reason, here's the spoiler, the only reason that the uh, Rebels beat the New Empire was because they had guns. That's the only reason, right? Because in the very final scene, spoilers, right, where they call for help and then just average everyday regular people show up it wasn't like the resistance it wasn't the new rebels or any kind of militia it was just regular people they made a huge point of saying who came is it the resistance and they go no it's just normal people and it was normal people standing up to a tyrannical government and the only reason they won was because all of those normal people had guns could you imagine if star wars was set in australia and they were like, all right, we need to rise up against the tyrannical Senator ScoMo. That's close enough to Snoke, isn't it? He's got the same kind of shaped head. Senator ScoMo is trying to burn the galaxy. We have to stop him. And everyone lines up to fight against the tyrannical evil... <laughs> uh, what would he be called? Darth... He'd be called Darth Smoko. Senator ScoMo, a.k.a. Darth Smoko, and everyone shows up in their tractors and their VL turbos and their utes and their Holden Commodores, and they all rock up, and, and everyone's revving their engine, and then truckies are going, rah, rah, all their toll trucks rolled up, their 18-wheelers, and they roll up against, you know, the, the Senator ScoMo's fucking uh, armada of, of, uh, of evil army people with guns and then they go all right guys charge but none of us have guns so we just get blasted into oblivion and then and then senator scomo wins that's how it would end if star wars was set in australia also ray wouldn't be called ray she'd be called shaz and she wouldn't have a lightsaber she'd just have like a can of vb and a big stick she found on a walk <laughs> And she doesn't need the stick to help her walk. She just likes the novelty of walking through the bush with a big stick with her fucking VB. Nah, she'd have a long neck, right? And Poe would, would just be called Pete. And he, he couldn't drive a starship, but it, for, fuck, he could do a burnout. Finn. Finn would just be Damo. And he'd be following after Shaz going, Shaz! Shaz! Just doing fuck all. Doing absolutely nothing. But dude, that's the only... That's like that move... That whole movie trilogy is such a good argument for guns that I couldn't even knock it, bro. If they didn't have guns, fucking Palpatine would have won. For sure. They would have rocked up and they would have fought against all of those ships that they had guns and they wouldn't have had guns. They'd be like, all right, well, I guess we're fucked. It turned me into a gun. That Star Wars turned me into a gun rights activist. 
You know, if Han Solo wasn't legally allowed to conceal carry, would he would he have shot that cunt in the fucking cantina? What's that green cunt's name? Greedo? Whatever his name is? No, he just would have been dead. Right? If all if the resistance wasn't allowed to have guns, over. It was just it was just an armed it was a, it was a well-regulated militia rose up against a tyrannical government. It was literally just the constitution. You notice the only countries that were like overrun with stormtroopers having their homes raided, they were the only countries with no guns. Or planets, rather, with no guns. Right? I mean, yeah, look, the Ewoks got away with smashing stormtroopers with sticks, but I think they're a little bit different. Yeah? Not everyone's three foot tall and can swing through a tree with an axe and take out a stormtrooper. You know, some of us have to be out here working hard in the galaxy with our, you know, with our blasters. We're not all fucking cuddly merchandise selling creatures I always think about that who I would be if I was if I was in Star Wars oh if I was in Star Wars this is who I would be I would be the stormtrooper in the original trilogy who hits his head on the door frame <laughs> that's who I would be because I do that shit all the time I've never related to a movie character more in my life then when Darth Vader walks through and then all the stormtroopers are coming through trying to look really cool and then that one stormtrooper who's a little bit too tall just smacks his head on a door frame as he enters a room trying to look cool but he looks like an idiot because he hit his forehead on a fucking door frame. That's me. I'm that stormtrooper that is just too tall. That's why, no, that's why I can't aim when I've got the stormtrooper ar- armor on. My, it doesn't fit properly. I can't see out of it properly. I can't move well. My limbs are too long. I've got a concussion from hitting my head on too many fucking door frames during battle. That's why I'm not going to hit Luke or Leia. You know, I think that movie was like, I loved, I lo- you know what? I actually quite enjoyed it. I thought it was going to be awful. I loved the first movie. I fucking hated the second movie and then the third movie I was like wow he actually did it and made a good film because that whole trilogy was such a mess dude they never should have done multiple directors never ever create a series of films with a series of directors that's just stupid has there ever been like a good trilogy that has had multiple directors I can't think of one Lord of the Rings was all the same guy um the Matrix was the same person. The original Star Wars, the same person. I mean, the prequels weren't that good. Now, nah, the third one was great, and I stand by it. Love the first one. Second one, yeah, but we also got General Grievous, you know? The original trilogy wasn't the best, but fuck, it had its good moments. Has there ever been, like, a good trilogy done by multiple directors? I don't think so. Maybe Fast and the Furious, but is that a film or is that just, wow, he, that was cool for an hour, for two hours. Like, oh, fuck, that looks sick. You know, is that a film? No, oh, they went fast and then they, they, oh, that would be hard to do in real life. That's what Fast and the Furious is. It's like, oh, oh I couldn't do that in my car. <laughs> That's what Fast and the Furious is. It's like, oh, man, if I did that, I'd probably crash, eh? Oh, I don't think I don't think I could hit that turn at that speed. You know, yeah. Oh, if I I don't if I was trying to drift in a car park, I reckon I'd probably just get a big fine from the Tokyo police. I'm not that good at driving, but good on if you are good on him. I can't think of like a movie series done by multiple directors that was good. Anyway, Right, so the, the 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 latest Star Wars trilogy, I really felt was like it was like J.J. Abrams planned out three 
great movies. He planned out the perfect trilogy. The first one was great. He set everything up. We established all the characters. And then he had his main bad guy, Snoke. And everyone was like, who the fuck's that guy? And then the, the next dude came along, whatever his name was. Can't even remember his name. And he was like, eh, I don't really like Snoke. Uh, so I'm going to kill him. Uh, and also, I want Rey to be more powerful, so I'm going to stack powers on her. Uh, and also, uh, here's this new character who's going to be Finn's love interest. And uh, also, I want more girl power in it, so I'm going to introduce this huge heroic character and then kill her at the end of the film for some reason. And also, uh, I know that uh, uh, fucking Princess Leia's actor died in real life. And I had the perfect opportunity to kill her in a respectful and beautiful way when she blew out into space defending what she believed in. But instead of killing her there, where it would be a beautiful and heart-touching moment, instead what I'm going to do is the Force can make you fly and breathe in space. And now... Dealing with that character's death in a respectful way is J.J. Abrams' problem. Chuck her in movie three, wipe my hands clean. I didn't have to kill her in the film, and it's someone else's problem to deal with. That's what that felt like. And then movie three was like, holy shit, he killed off the main bad guy. You know, Emperor Palpatine being the main bad guy was only decided in 2019. I think that everything Palpatine did in that movie definitely could have been done by Snoke, for sure. Like, if you really think about it, even Rey being Palpatine's granddaughter still could have been revealed without Palpatine, and it would have been fine. It was very cool to have him in the film. I loved him in the film. I thought that was great. He's such a good actor, that guy. Um... But yeah, so so then, right, because movie two did all of this shit and changed a bunch of stuff and killed Snoke for no reason. And then I felt like movie three was like JJ ignored everything other than the stuff that he absolutely could not. So obviously Snoke dies, so he has to deal with that, right? But he, he ignored fucking... Who, what was the Asian girl's character's name? She wasn't in the film, like, at all. She was a background character, hardly referenced at all, right? She was like, fuck off, Rose. Fuck off, Rose. I don't like that character. She tried to kiss Finn, and she also reinforced negative Asian driving stereotypes. Get that bitch out of here. You can't drive a spaceship? Fuck off. Finn would... I'm sorry, right? Sure, that lady's a lovely woman, but let's be honest. Finn, he's not going there, yeah? We all agree... If you were Finn, would you go there? I don't think so. No thanks. I'll find someone better. I'm going after Ray. Um, so J.J. Abr- Abrams was just like watched the second film and I felt like he sat there the whole time going, I can't believe this cunt did that. Why the fuck are we on the spaceship? What is this s- weird subplot about the gambling planet? I'm not going to follow that up. That was the only good moment in the second film and JJ threw it in the bin was where they liberated that gambling planet and they like hinted at inspiring a revolution and that little kid using the force at the end. That was the only good moment in the second film and JJ was like, all right, respect. I can see it. That's pretty good. But you know what? You killed Snoke. So fuck your little force user. I'm not referencing it at all. And then he threw everything in the bin. Great. Really, really good. I would have done the same thing out of spite. You know what I would have done? I would have killed Rose and I would have brought Snoke back to life. I would have just gone like, that didn't happen. Movie 2 doesn't exist. It's not a trilogy anymore. It is now a sequel. Snoke's back to life. I wouldn't even bring him back to life. I would just make him show up and none of the characters would be surprised. I would just pretend that he never died. I would have done that shit. That's how petty I would have been if I was the director of Star Wars. Not that I ever would be but if I were to that's what I would have done and then the whole film just would have ended oh yeah so right he also killed Luke in a stupid way in movie 2 so the only thing that JJ absolutely had to reference was Snoke being dead and Luke being dead 
that was like the only thing that he actually referenced from the second film, from memory, right? And even then, Luke just came back into the film as a ghost. Like, if you really watch the third film, Luke could have been alive and the only thing that would have changed would be that he didn't walk through fire. That's it. Because he was a ghost. And he was doing shit that ghosts can't do. I feel like J.J. always planned for Luke to be alive and but just stay on his island as a mentor type thing. And that was it. I think that originally... Luke was supposed to train Ray up, and that would have made more sense. Instead, because fucking old mate killed Luke, he had to be like, all right, well, I guess Leia trains him. I guess she was trained. Because in the first film, right, Luke trains Kylo, and I feel like if it was planned that Leia was supposed to be a Jedi, it would have been mentioned there for sure that Leia was also trained. But it was never mentioned there. So instead... JJ in the third film kind of was just like, ah, she was trained there too. But it was never said in the first film, so I feel like he added that in because Luke was supposed to be alive. And in, in JJ's film, Luke just hangs out as a ghost for like the whole time and then also uses the Force on a spaceship, which Ray could have done herself, you know? I mean, she did do that to a spaceship previously, so surely she could have done that herself. But JJ was like, eh, I'm just going to pretend that Luke's alive, but I'll make him blue. And then uh, S- S- uh, Palpatine will do all of Snoke's shit. I'm doing my film. I'm not changing anything. And I felt like, you know, it was pretty good. For all of the cleanup that JJ had to do to fix all of the mess that the second director made, I think he concluded it pretty fucking well. However, why the fuck did Ray and Kylo Ren kiss? I laughed in the cinema. I was like, why did that happen? That was the most, that was the weirdest left field kiss I have ever seen in a fucking film in my life. Those two were literally trying to kill each other for three films. Six hours, just trying to murder each other. That was their only goal. And then at the very last moment, they kiss after no, not even a hint of romantic tension at all. That was fucking weird. It made the scene worse. They didn't need it. He could have just died and they could have had a little like platonic moment together and it would have been lovely and a great way to end Kylo's character. But instead they kissed and I was like, oh, that was fucking weird. That was so weird that even Finn's actor said it was weird on Twitter. What's his name? I love that guy. Dude, all he's been doing for the last six months is just fucking bullying. Not six months. The last like few weeks since Star Wars came out, just bullying nerds on Twitter. You see the video that he put up? Like he paid someone to edit him kicking and dancing on top of screenshots of people angry at him. John Boyega. I love him. I follow him. I follow him on Instagram now. He's like my favorite actor now just because he's an asshole to nerds who don't like how he's responded. So good. I reckon that, that that's like the only way to distance yourself from a franchise that big. Like a franchise that is bigger than you ever will be. Like Star Wars is bigger than, than uh, Mark Hamill. Star Wars is bigger than uh, Harrison Ford. Like they will ne- as famous as those two people are, Harrison Ford especially, they will never ever be more famous than Star Wars. So the only way, if you're in like the new trilogy, and you know, John Boyega fucking... Uh, Fuck, what's Ray's actor? Daisy Ridley. They're relatively new actors. They've got to distance themselves. Daisy's fucked. She deleted her social media because everyone's bullying. Right? Whereas John was like, all right, she had to delete her shit to get over it. I'm going to bully nerds. That's what Daisy should have done. She just should have gone, hey, nerds, you will never fuck me. You will never fuck a woman of my caliber. I might not have tits, but you don't have pussy. At least I've got pussy. That's what she should have done. Everyone bullying her over not having tits and having no ass. She should have just gone, hey, at least I've got pussy. 
Because you don't. And you never will. She should have just gone, you will never get this. You will never get this for like fucking all three trilogies. And then she would have become the most famous actor in the world. That's what I would have done. For sure. Even if I didn't have a pussy, I would have gone, hey, you're never gonna, you will never fuck my pussy. If John Boyega gets on Twitter and goes, you will never fuck my pussy. That's it. I'm, I'll, I've never bought an actor's t-shirt before, but if he releases merch, I'm buying it. Even if it just says, you will never fuck my pussy, quote John Boyega. I'm buying that shit. <laughs> Day one. I'll pre-order it. I don't give a fuck. So yeah, I thought, I thought Star Wars was pretty good. And JJ is an incredible director. If he was able to clean up the mess that was the second movie without creating a bad... Like, he created, like, a like a very good film. Wasn't amazing. Didn't live up to the hype. Absolutely not. I'll, I'll agree with that. But I think that it could have if movie two was not a disaster. Disney rushed that shit, hey? All they had to do was, was just, you know, wait another year. Another six months to each film. 18 months. That's all it needed, was just for JJ to have a little rest and then get to work on number two. But instead, Disney was like money hungry and they had to fucking rush it. Dude, how gross was the same-sex kiss in it? That's going to get taken out of context and posted on Twitter. (laughs) I mean, like, not the kiss. I mean, how in your face it was. And that would have been fine, except Disney cut the same-sex kiss from all of their, like the Chinese market and from Singapore and probably a whole bunch of other countries that are homophobic. Like they, they, it was so blatant and gross. Didn't I say this? I predicted this, that they would put in a gay kiss and then cut it out or put something progressive in and then edit it out for all of the regressive countries. Like such a gross, blatant money move that was like so hollow and didn't mean anything. You know what I mean? Like they, they put it in for Twitter And then they took it out for people who throw gay people off buildings just to make money. Super gross. I thought that sucked. Like, I wouldn't, like, if I were an actor, I'd be like, no, I'm not going to kiss so you can make money out of progressive people and then remove it for people who hate my people. I'm not a puppet. I thought that was really gross of Disney to do. But, you know. They're making billions and I record a podcast in a warehouse. So, hey, maybe I should exploit. Maybe maybe I should start playing. You know, you only get that money from playing both teams. Yeah. Like Disney's like, we support gay rights in America. And then in China, they just say in Chinese, we don't like them either. And then, you know, there's not enough crossover between those two countries. You know, it's in the Chinese poster. I think it was the Chinese one. It was one of them. They made Finn, the black character, really small. Whereas he was like one third of the poster everywhere else. Like just so, just so blatantly, we support equality wherever it makes us money. I guess Disney really is paying attention to go woke, go broke. They're like, go woke in certain areas where going woke is a wise financial decision. But what? what's the go Be on the right, set for life. Eh, that's a, yeah, good enough. If you if you can do better, comment below. How long have we been going? going? Forty two minutes. All right. What else has been happening here? Um. Oh, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the the video that I put out this morning. I'm trialing something. My American audience is. I've realized three times the size of my Australian audience. So I'm trialing, right? If I'm doing two videos a week, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one at Australian prime time and then one at American prime time. And I'm thinking that American prime time, I'm going to upload those ones. If it works, I'm going to try it for a month and we'll see how the videos go. I'm going to try that. So I'm going to put the American ones out on weekends so that by the time Australia wakes up on the weekend, the video will be there for them instead of if I did it on a weekday, they'd be at work. So I'm going to try that and see how that goes because I've just noticed like every time I upload a video now at like 5 p.m. Australian time, like half the comments are just, why would you upload at 5 a.m.? 
wow, you're uploading late. You must be up late. Oh, fuck, it's great, you know, staying up super late because I get a Lewis Spears video, which means that most of the cunts that would watch my video are just in bed as they should be. So we'll try that. One for Australia, one for the US, and we'll see um, how that goes. Um... Yeah, so Star Wars, just a big advertisement for gun rights. Epstein. Man, what else has been happening in the news here? I hope you guys have been having a good fucking good week here. Sorry, I'm a little bit out because I'm recording like episodes uh, as I go. Oh, that's right. Greeley is finally out of prison. Um, Greeley actually just left. I hung out with him all day today. It was really, really great. First time I've seen him not in a cell. It was really good. It made, it made me happy. I'm still kind of... I'm still buzzing from it. He's doing super well. Uh, met him and his and his uh, and some of his family. It was really nice, and uh, he's doing great. He's really happy. He's healthy. He's uh, working. He's really hustling. I've never seen him in such a like productive thing. So that's great. We did a podcast that's going to be out next Sunday. If you want to hear it early, support me on Patreon. You guys are going to get it on probably on Monday. I would say Monday, Tuesday when I edit that up and uh, upload it. So if you want that, you know, fucking tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. I'll put it up. You know what? I'll get it up Monday. I promise. If you guys want it on Monday, uh, tomorrow, uh, go go support me on Patreon. You guys are going to get it super early. It's a, It was a really great, interesting chat about his time in prison, what he's, what he's uh, working on now that he's out, and uh, just his whole thoughts about the prison system. Dude, his story about he was in a riot, just wait. He, had, he was in a full-on prison riot, and he tells the story on, on, the, on uh, next week's episode, and it is... Man, it gave me goosebumps just listening to it, imagining myself there. I couldn't, I couldn't, I, I couldn't even think of what it would be like to be in that. He said, <laughs> he said it was some of the most fun he's ever had in his life, and fuck. That's right, this made me laugh. Uh, so, there's, uh, there's this puppy that was just born, uh, German Shepherd, and it's a very rare puppy. It was born completely green and they've called it the Hulk or Hulk so uh, he's born with completely green like bright neon green fur you look at his siblings there's a black one there's a white one but he is completely green and it's going viral on Twitter the owners are posting photos they've called it Hulk and they're like man this is crazy we've got a green dog this is like a genetic freak this must happen one in every three million years I don't know what's going on and it's huge news everyone thinks it's so cute we love Hulk this and that uh, anyway so they've done more research into it they took it to a vet to get tests done and then the vet looked at the dog and they were like oh yeah uh, that happens every now and then the reason why it's green is because while it was being born it was scared and it shit itself and then got smeared with its own poo that's its first ever poo and the reason it's green is because it's covered in its own shit and that's why what you have been holding and rubbing your face in and taking photos with is a dog covered in its very first shit and you've called it Hulk when in reality, the minute you clean it, it's going to turn turn white, and you're going to look at your dog called Hulk, who's not green, and be like, oh yeah, I remember when I stupidly thought I had a green dog, but in reality, I was rubbing my face in shit. <laughs> and that's just great to see, man. That's just really great to see. Right, let's get into miscellaneous bit at the end here. Uh, if you would like to send an email into the podcast, please send one through to podcast at lewspears.com. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about a bunch of people who got offended uh, by my clip that I put on. Jeez, fucking classic, bro. I talk about so much shit on this podcast. I upload one clip to my big channel and cunts get mad because they're not used to it. Dude, there's got to be something wrong with all of you fuckers because none of you complained when I put it up. Days for fucking a whole week it sat here on the podcast channel. Not a single complaint. I put it up on my fucking channel and cunts get angry. Um, actually, fucking, I'm going to, I'll talk about it in my next episode. I'll save it, right? Podcast at lewspears.com if you would like to email uh, the podcast. If you have a crazy story, if you have, if you need some life advice, I would uh, love to uh, hear it. So send it through, and uh, let me know. If you write anything with four paragraphs, hey, I'm going to scroll through it. I'm going to go, fuck that, and I won't read it. All right. Oh, here we go. Right. A friend from high school turned out to be thirsty since day one. Found out six years later. G'day, mate. Uh, 
Thought you might get a kick out of this. When I started high school, I made friends with a guy four years older than me. Oh. We would shoot the shit over video games and were friends online, but didn't keep in touch after school. Wonder why? Because you're an adult. Uh, about six months ago, he got back in touch and we caught up online. He started sending through pictures of himself to show, mu- show, show how much he had physically changed from a typical grungy teenager to e-girl get up or some shit. Wait, he, he's an ego? Weird. He asked me to send through pictures of myself, which I refused. Good man. After chatting for a while and having not sent any pictures, he asked if I got hot after puberty because he remembered me being particularly tall and adult looking when I was 13. Uh-oh! Pedophile alert! If anyone... Hey, if you're... Okay, here's a good one. If you are under 16 and anybody over 18 goes, Wow, you're so mature for your age. They're trying to fuck you. That's what they're doing. You're so mature for your age. They're trying to fuck you. They're, that's the that's like, wow, you, you're so mature. You could probably suck my dick. That's what they're trying to do. Really big red flag. All those girls out there that are under 16, if you're talking to an adult man, it, fuck it, even an adult girl, and they're going, wow, you're so mature for your age. You're getting groomed. You are getting fucking groomed. You're getting a pedicure. Um, considering I'm a guy and also autistic, yep, also red flag, if you're autistic, you probably listen to the show or you might just be undiagnosed. I love all my autistic fans, listeners, love you cunts. All you dudes out there with your special interest, right? Cunts that can just memorize the Melways. You know, you know, you, you could, you know, all of the prime numbers, like all these scientists are out there going, man, prime numbers never end. You already worked it out in your head what the last number is. You're like, fucking idiots, not even telling them because you can't really make eye contact or start a conversation. Love you, cunts. I love autistic people, bro. They're the best. New, new one autistic guy. Oh, I'm kind of writing a joke about it. New one autistic guy. He, his, his, his like special topic was just Barbie dolls, but he was he was a he was like a not gay dude, and it was it was like cute when he was nine, and now he's like twenty five, and he just still fucking loves it. Good on him. I figured uh, he he's he remembered me being particularly tall and adult when I was thirteen. Considering I'm a guy, I figured it was a tasteless joke and ignored it, diverting the conversation to give him a second chance. I said something about preferring to about preferring to take photos of the local forests and whatnot instead of myself, to which he replied by sending me a shirtless picture of himself in bed making a cum face, uh, a a he guau, a guau, I don't know how to say that fucking word, asking how's that for a nature shot. Oh, yuck. Dude, guys are gross. Like, they'll turn anything into sex. Like, girls will be like, oh, I love cleaning the toilet. And they'll be like, oh, yeah. Who comes out of ass? I'd love to see your ass. Like, just like any kind of link they can get to just t- turning it back into being about their pussy. We'll just take that leap. He was promptly unfriended and blocked after that exchange. Yeah, good move. Hope you, your friends and family are keeping safe in the fires. Greetings from New Zealand. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, that's great. You made the right move, dude. That's funny. Fuck, it's weird having friends who want to fuck you you thought it was platonic I, I didn't get it when I was younger but 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 now that I have like status it like happens more like you just meet dude I'm convinced that like I'm I, I know what I look like I'm not the best looking dude in the world right but I get like girls hitting on me now and I honestly think the only thing you need to do as a guy to separate yourself from the masses is have a personality, be interesting, have a passion. You don't, you don't even need to be successful at it. And just have like an all right job. That's it. That, that alone. And also don't wear that fucking festival shirt that every cunt who goes to Cotton On walks home with. That's it. Have a personality, be passionate about something, and be an interesting cunt. Talk about what you care about. That's all. And a girl will be like, wow, this guy's not a creep. That immediately puts you in top 30% of dudes that she talks to. 
Anyway, guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much for listening to the Spears Sunnies podcast. It's Sydney. Tickets are on sale now. LouSpears.com slash gigs. Click the red bar and you'll see the uh, the premiere on the 30th of January. It is coming up in two weeks. I will see you there. And if you're in regional Australia, make sure you grab your tickets uh, to Luke and Lewis Hit the Road. We are coming. It's going to be fucking great. We've got a whole RV. We're going to be vlogging the entire thing and filming every show. It's going to be great. Warnable, Ballarat, Shepparton, Wagga Wagga, Bathurst, Central Coast, Port Macquarie, to Woomba, Bundaberg, Rockhampton, Mackay, Townsville, and Cairns. Loosebeers.com slash gigs. If you want to hear the Greeley Jail Tales podcast uh, a whole week early, pretty much, support me on Patreon. You'll get it nice and early, as will uh, all of my other videos. Uh, my video that I put up this morning was up fucking two days ago on Patreon. So you get it all, and you get uh, a bunch of other rewards too, and you get into the Discord chat, which is fucking great. All right, thank you so much. I will talk to you next Sunday, and I hope you guys all have a very fun Fucking shit one.